we all know mammals as they are warm-blooded creatures with hair and which suckle their young with milk. But when you're dealing with fossils, you can't rely on those characters. Uh, they don't have the, the flesh or the hair and the soft parts preserved. And so we have to, to deal with other characters such as their seven vertebrae in their neck and with a single bone in the lower jaw and with different kinds of teeth in the jaw. The newest exhibit at Exposition Park's Natural History Museum of L.A. County offers a bone-chilling glimpse into the evolutionary process which took place after the reign of the dinosaurs. The Age of Mammals is an educational and artistic tour de force which blends traditional fossil exhibition with state-of-the-art displays, painting a picture of how early species of mammals were able to thrive despite catastrophic changes in climate and geology. We've just opened the new Age of Mammals Hall here at the Natural History Museum. And it's a very exciting day for us because after a number of years work, we finally have our, our specimens on display. This is a, a, a collection that's one of the finest in North America. And we've, we've put on display some specimens that characterize the whole of the last 65 million years. And they tell us how life has changed during that time. Fiends are enlightened. Uh, everything is quite visible and, uh, and nice to see. <laughs> well, th this is a really delightful combination of some spectacular specimens, some wonderful skeletons, some of which have never been on display before. And inside this renovation of the 1913 hall, which with the, the beautiful light coming through the side and the light coming through the ceiling, and uh, the, it really does the justice to, to the wonderful skeletons. Greeting the visitors to the Age of Mammals exhibit is its largest specimen, the full-size skeleton of a fin whale. This hallway is known as the Thin Whale Passage, and the skeleton's epic size and the mysterious shadows it casts simply whet the appetite for what is to follow. In the rotunda of what is known as the 1913 building, visitors can experience Life Through the Ages, a collection of classic paintings by influential artist Charles R. Knight. And inside the Age of Mammals exhibit, Traditional fossils blend in a modern and elegant display. We sort of designed to have all of the skeletons and taxidermy up close and personal, right in your face so you can really see them. We sort of select materials such as the stone and the glass that you see that really sort of shows the exuberance of the skeletons like the mastodon over there or the saber-toothed um, cat and so forth. And then the production was very much like a layering so we sort of layer, we start, we start to build and then we sort of develop the content so the stories get fleshed out, so the graphic designers kick in and finally the cherry is the, uh, the lighting designers. And in this space, it was, it was relatively demanding but we embraced it because we're surrounded by natural light all around us. So I, I can't tell you how impressed I am uh, with the lighting because no matter where I was, I could see something and see it well. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you like it and thank yeah. you. The, the incredible thing is that this room has natural light all day, especially in the summer. And when you come back, the skeletons seem to move because the shadows move throughout the day. And then the design of the exhibit with all this of the transparency and stuff, you get fantastic shadows. So, and then when you see it at night, it's pretty spectacular when we can actually control the lighting. And it's very, very dramatic. We sort of, we pin spot things and we try to show things that you should be seeing in the content, such as the bone-crushing dog, so you sort of focus on his big jaws and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it, it has taken you how long uh, from beginning to uh, this point? It took us around 24 months to, uh, to design and fabricate and install this collection. Um, some of it started a lot earlier than that, uh, about a year and a half prior, which is the articulation and the preparation of all the big specimens you see. Um, they were done here in Los Angeles and in Canada. So that's a lot of science involved. You know, you sort of got to rearticulate them so they're actually correct to the way the scientist wants them. 
So that started before, and but then the, the real design work and the storytelling started about two years ago. Sounds like you had a budget too. We did have a budget, like most of these big projects, but you know you have to you have to use it well, and like everything in an exhibit, you have to serve the story. So hopefully we did that with our budget. Hopefully, and also it has to. We we have a fantastic uh, visitor base here. Like everybody in LA comes here, so part of our resources have to make this very durable. What has it been like for you personally? I, I think uh, I have a feeling that you've been enjoying this. Oh, I love it. I've been doing this for over 20 years around the world with various museums as a designer and a project manager and I love it. This is, this is the best part. We're in now, once we get all the, the kids in here and they're really enjoying it, that provides a lot of reward, personal reward. Among some of the many fossils displayed is the centerpiece of the collection, the Simi Valley Mastodon. The 20,000-year-old fossil is so named because it was discovered in 2001 at a real estate development in Simi Valley, and its 8-foot, 9-inch height reflects its massive size and power. An unusual display is the walking whale, an early ancestor of the modern-day whale, which spent much of its time in the water. A modern-day cheetah is on display alongside a skeletal depiction of itself to showcase its incredible flexibility and agility. Nature's most prolific mammal, the human being, known as Homo sapiens, is represented with a scrapbook page from the family tree, underlining the unique blend of ingenuity and intelligence which allowed mankind to quickly become the dominant species on the planet. Familiar animals like the modern zebra are part of the family of mammals, and a close look at their patterns contrasts sharply with the woolly coat of the modern alpaca, a descendant of the prehistoric camel. Hair and fur are trademarks of the mammal kingdom, and in one way or another, these traits always manifest themselves on all mammalian species. And on display in all its glory is the saber-toothed tiger, a species so iconic that it serves as the official state fossil of California. Uh, I understand as uh, president, uh, you would like to invite people to come here. We would. It's fun, it's educational, it's great for people of all ages. Uh, what can one expect when one comes to the museum? Well, I'm going to ask Avis Ridley-Thomas because she's just seen it today. Right, and the answer would be? One can expect to learn everything about the history of mammals in our region and throughout the world. And the wonderful displays of the mammals that have come from the sea and walk on land and first walked on land, for example, a whale once walked. That's what I learned today. I, I saw a very large one that I couldn't <laughs> believe. <laughs> it's just phenomenal, I have to tell you. I'm just delighted to be here and I will be back and I want to encourage everybody in Los Angeles to take advantage of this opportunity to learn in this way. Uh, I guess people don't realize that uh, uh, you're established here in uh, 1913. Well, we're one of Los Angeles' better kept secrets, yeah. I'm afraid. <laughs> But I think with this new hall and with the sequence of halls that will follow it, we're going to be th thrust well into the forefront again, and people are going to be coming to the Natural History Museum because it's going to be a destination. And there is a future here of other, other events or uh, uh, projects that are going to come about, I believe. Well, th this is the first in, in a series of three halls. Here we explain what's going on in the age of mammals, what happened in the last 65 million years, why it happened, and where humans fit into the story. Next year we're going to open at about the same time a new hall of dinosaurs which will explain the dinosaur mysteries, what happened to the dinosaurs and why they died out. And then following that we've got a, a new big hall about California environmental history. So between them they're going to provide new and state-of-the-art exhibits that are going to be on display in Los Angeles for the first time. To experience this fascinating glimpse into this important chapter of Earth's history, 
Don't Miss the Age of Mammals, now on display at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County in Exposition Park. Thank you.